So today we're gonna dive into a couple of different techniques that I seen in a recent social media post by Formula One. All of these techniques are pretty easy to recreate within Fusion, within DaVinci Resolve. Not sure if you would use them all together, but I wanna show you at least a few of them, how you do them so that in your work in the future, you can implement these techniques. So without further ado, let's jump in. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to let you know about my website, jrtv.com, where we have hundreds of different templates available for DaVinci Resolve 17, 16, and 15. All of them are backwards compatible with the newest version of DaVinci Resolve. If you haven't taken a look, the selection of templates is pretty diverse with everything that you would typically think when you think templates, everything from titles, transitions, infographs, logo stings, slideshows, video displays, video effects, compositing elements, as well as a bunch of color preset tools specifically for DaVinci Resolve's color page. If you're interested in taking a look for yourself, there's a link in the description. All right, so I'm gonna quickly go over a few of these. And there were a couple of different things here. Obviously moving text isn't super difficult. Just use a couple of keyframes in Fusion. But you might not know that all of your fonts that you use, you can get this look where you just have the outside ring uh, with a little bit of glow. So I'll show you how to do that. I'll also show you how to do this whole dot technique here where some of the dots are smaller than others. Super simple to do. Uh, there is a little bit of setup and it can get a bit confusing because we are going to be using a particle system for that, but uh, it's not that difficult. Um, if you notice here, these little bars that come out, they actually come out as separate elements. I'll show you how to do that. That's not that difficult. And we can also, obviously, the biggest portion of this is the coloring. If you haven't noticed here, we go from a dark purple to a red to an orange slash yellow. And it all is based off of the brightness of the image. So that's what we're going to be tackling today. All right, so in Fusion, I just have a couple of pictures of cars um, just so we have some media to work off of. Obviously, whatever you're working on, it doesn't have to be cars. If you're working within DaVinci Resolve 17, you can go right into Fusion and start working from there. If you're working with something 16 or, four, or 15, uh, you will have to right click, add Fusion Comp. Then once you do that, then you drag it onto your timeline. But if you're using 17 or newer, you don't have to do that anymore. You can go right into Fusion. Once you add an element into Fusion, you'll automatically see your media outs connected and that also drops something on the timeline, which is a Fusion comp. So that's a new little thing that's pretty cool within DaVinci Resolve 17. So the first thing that we're going to tackle is the text, because I feel like that's the easiest. Uh, if we just add in a text node here, and I'll just type in something. It doesn't matter what font you use, you can use any font. So I'm just going to throw in a font like this. Let's kind of get it to look how they had theirs. All right, so that's something similar to how, what they had, right? Let's kind of fill in the frame a little bit more. Once you have this created, if you go over into shading, it allows you to do a lot of really cool things within uh, text itself. And one of them is obviously this little button here, the appearance, it draws a line around the text. So that's the simplest way to do that. Let me add in here the purple background that they had, and we'll drop that on top. And then in here, we will come over and change this color. I believe that they had a red that was kind of something like that, right? The only other thing that they added on was if you click here, we're gonna hold down shift, hit space bar and type in here glow. Whoops, we'll type in glow. And that just added in a little bit of a glow. You can play around with these settings here to get the glow to look how you want. But that's pretty much what they had here. I don't know where my video went. There we are. So that's pretty much what they have here. A font with the outline and a little bit of glow on there on a purple-ish, bluish background. And that's pretty much that in a nutshell, right? Might want to make this a little bit bigger. So that's the first one. All right. So now that's out of the way. Let's do the one that kind of is the prominent thing within here and that's the fully colored image but getting you know it to be recolored based off of luminance values the brightness values of an image so here is our image uh, let's actually use this one because i feel like this one has more colors in there right so we have a bunch of different colors here all right so the first thing we're going to want to do is make a bitmap so we're going to hold down shift hit spacebar and type in bit to get our bitmap and we will connect that up and view that 
don't see anything now, but we'll come over here into channels that it's going to be manipulating and we're gonna go into luminance. Now we have a black and white um, image and we're going to be using that to map all of our colors to. This is not going to make any sense, but it works. Uh, we're going to pull in a fast noise. And if you know fast noise, it's just to get random noise and to get you know things to look and move around like that. There's there's a lot of a lot of powerful things that you can do with this. But uh, within the fast noise node, what we're going to do is we're going to turn the detail all the way down, turn on discontinuous, and then we'll come over to color. We'll flip this down to gradient. And now over here in our bitmap, we're going to hold the right mouse button, drop it on here. We'll get the little list and we're going to go to noise brightness map. And now we can see here. Uh, we now have the ability to use this gradient to add all of our colors in. It's kind of backwards right now, but we'll work with this. So this side, we'll click on this one. This was more of like a yellow, right? Something like that. And then this side was that deep, dark purple, right? So we'll bring this way down here like that. And then in the middle, we had a red, right? So something like that. So that's pretty much the look. Now we just have to move these around until we get something that looks half decent. All right, I think that that is kind of almost there. Uh, I'm curious what this would look like here. This is actually the wrong size image. So if I just put that in there, then we get that. So these, both of these images are on completely different levels of brightness. So if I wanted to use that one here, I could just, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. All right, after this, get the brightness. So now if I view this, by changing the brightness here, we'll get different amounts, something like that. But you at least get the idea of how to, you know, remap this stuff. So that is the second element to all of this. The next one is one that I actually think is pretty cool, and that is adding in all of those little dots. Now this gets kind of complicated, so you're gonna have to follow with me to be able to recreate one of these. So I'm just going to grab two nodes here. I'm gonna make one black and one white and then connect one to the other. So now we're viewing it like that. And then I'm going to grab a mask because we're going to mask the um, input here, which is the foreground. We're gonna map that. And let's just put this on a 45 and we will make this big and then slide this over and make it big so that we have it going across the whole frame, something like this, right? So now we have it going across the whole frame, just like that, and we will turn up this to, let's do like 0.5, right? So now we get a nice gradient here. So once we have the nice gradient here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click and we're gonna go into uh, particles and we're gonna get a image emitter we're gonna grab a now particles and we're going to grab a uh, particle renderer, which is the renderer there. We'll connect these up and we'll connect this in. And the first thing we're gonna do is in the renderer, we're gonna switch this to 2D because we only wanna see it on screen. And then in the P emitter, we wanna change these densities way down something actually, I think like 0.5 or 0.05. Okay, so then once we do that, we can come into the emitter, we'll go into region, or excuse me, style, go into style and we will go into bitmap. Then we'll grab another uh, background, come over to images and we'll switch this to, let's do like 50 by 50 We'll grab a circle, drop that on. If we take a look at this, we'll go one by one, right? So now we have this and we'll just switch this to white and we'll drop this in. And that's going to be the particle shape that we're gonna be using. So you could do this with any shape that you wanted to. And now if we view this, we have over here some dots and over here some dots, right? But 
they're just using the colors right of these of these two right they're, ju they're just using the the colors right so if you can see that there we have some color over here and some color over here but that's not what we're going to be doing we're going to turn this back to black right so now we have our all of our particles there and there's a nice gradient of color but we're going to change the particle size based on the brightness levels so to do that we're gonna click on our uh, P emitter, or excuse me, um, particle image emitter, shift spacebar, and here we're gonna type in P custom, right? P custom, not force, just P custom. We'll add that in. And then in our P custom, we'll come over to particles, scroll all the way down till we get to size. And for size, we're gonna take the red, green, and blue channels add them together and use that as the size. So we'll go red plus blue plus green. Oops, like that. Okay, so now if we look at this, we have very small pixels or particles, and then they get increasingly big until they're overlapping, right? So there we go. So now that we have that, if you want to change the the amount of uh, of size that this goes, you know, you could come in here and you could divide this by oops two or whatever you want it to do. I think I would have to close that. Is that not working? Does that not work that way? Okay, it does work that way. All right, so there we are. So let's do like five. Okay, so now we have practically no pixels or no particles over here, and then they get increasingly bigger. But right now they're all the same, or they're all using the color of of everything that came in. So so they're all the same color because if we look over here, they're all just this like blue color. What we'll do is coming out of here, we'll use all of that and have that go into the mask of just a background, and we'll switch this up to um kind of the color that they have here right so something like that and then that's pretty much what they have going on here maybe take out a little bit of the green um, but that's pretty much it in a nutshell right so now if we were to have that on the background of something Take all of this and bring this over. Come on. I put this on top of all of this. So now we can start to see what we're creating here, right? So what I like to do is because uh, how particle systems work is they have, um, if I come into here and we take a look at this, I have my playhead over here at zero, right? So the first frame, um, they have like a lifespan. You can have it you know, create particles every frame and this and that and the other thing. And you can get, end up with a lot of particles and stuff like that. So we don't have to process particles and do any any type of uh, intense calculations because I already have the look I want and it doesn't ever change. All we're doing is if we look in here uh, when this plays, all it's doing is just sliding it in as like a static texture. Um, we can just save this as just, um, uh, uh, an image, right? So what I would do out of here, just view just this last node with the color, right click, save image. Now that opened up on my other screen. I'm just going to, there's a drop down. I'm just going to go into PNG, uh, to choose my folder and then save it as dots. Once I do that, let me go into that folder now. All right. So now if I look at this, all I have is just those dots, right? And I choose uh, PNG because I wanna save the alpha channel, right? And that will allow me to save the alpha channel. So now I don't have to do any of this stuff again. Uh, if I was to add this to a project, I don't have to um, be concerned with any of this and you know calculating because particle systems can be a little uh, intensive on some systems and depending on how long the timeline is and everything else, right? So now it's just an image. So now we have that. So that would just simply get added on top. And then you could simply, because I'm in this merge, we could simply just have it, you know, start up here and then come into frame. And we could also shift this a little bit. Cause right now, if we look at this, the lines are perfectly across. 
I might not want that. I want it to be kind of sporadic. So we could then, this is almost like the stuff that's in comic books. <laughs> These like colors. Um, so yeah, it would just slide down like they had in theirs, slide down. And then the further it slides in, the so more solid it gets, right? But you just have to watch your edges here. Um, if you, yeah, you just have to watch your edges there. So you maybe bring it up a little bit or not have it, you know, tilted so much or whatever. Um, but you have that. You can also do mirror edges and stuff like that, but that's a little bit more advanced for this. Okay, so the next thing would be these bars here. Now these bars are super simple if you've done anything in Fusion before, but um, for some people they, they might not know how to do it, but they like the look because they all come in as separate elements, right? But they're all perfectly aligned. Uh, and so to do that, it's not that difficult. There are a couple of things to that you can uh, pay attention to. So first I'm just going to bring in a background, just make it white so we can actually see it. And I'm going to bring in a rectangle mask, connect it up. And for this situation, I'm just gonna go full width and bring it to the thickness that I want everything to be. This is going to be the end all be all thickness and location for everything. So I'll leave it here. And now everything that I connect, I'm going to connect into this, uh, this one, right? And then on the the one that I had here, right? This, this one that I had here, uh, this final one or this uh, long one, I'm just going to click on paint mode and have it multiply. Any multiply means that they have to overlap pretty much in, in this situation. Um, they have to overlap to equal one, which then would be visible. So now in this rectangle, I can just take this and go at a 45, shrink it down to the size I want. And now I have an element that will only ever stay right there, right? So even if I slide it up or whatever, it'll only ever be in that one area wherever this is, right? So it makes, make sure you keep things clean and things don't go out of whack if you accidentally move something. Um, and then you would just add to this. So I just take this, copy, paste, and now I have, you know, a second one. Copy, paste, oops, copy, paste, and then I have another one. And then, you know, the, the one that's like way over here, this one was a bit thicker. So you have that. And now you have these elements, which you don't really have to be concerned with making sure that you only move them on one axis. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Now all you have to do for here is just the center is you just have to keyframe them. Not, not hard at all, but that's kind of how you would do that. And then you just, to get the animation where they're all coming in at, um, they're all coming in and then settling, you just have to set your keyframes up, you know, staggered so that they all have their own uh, timing and that they're not all timed the same at the same time. Yeah, that's kind of the uh, the aspects of this. That I just noticed that right here is a drop shadow. Quick little tip. Um, there's actually a uh, drop shadow node. It makes things super simple. You can just drop that on and then things automatically have a drop shadow. So I can just take that drop it on here, boom, now things have a drop shadow. That's pretty much that in a nutshell. I think I kind of covered everything that I wanted to. If I didn't, I apologize. This was a pretty cool thing and I thought that uh, I could show you guys a couple of different little techniques on how to create different elements that you might end up using in your project. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Hopefully you learned something. Uh, let me know in the comments if you did or didn't, if I should continue to keep making these things or if I should uh, do the full-fledged projects that I've done in the past. But with that being said, have a good day. My name's JR, thanks for watching. See you guys later.